This is the city of Gudu where vibrant trade on palm oil and cornel, as well as other palm produce, took place and were evacuated to the seaports in Abonima and Port Harcourt in the pre colonial days. Chief Samson Perry Oconi and his wife, Madame Ayon, of blessed memory, gave birth to Dr. Monday Perry Oconi here. Chief Samson Perry Oconi was a school supervisor in the defunct eastern region of Nigeria and a notable native court jurist. It was said that disputants left his palace shaking horns. What a Boer people were described as a Perry Oconi handshake due to the wise and bitter dexterity in alternative conflict resolution. Telling a story about a great statesman, educationist, patriot, and Panijo Nanja Delta activist such as the late Monday Perry Oconi is still be in the dilemma of the ten blind men in Odana. An allegory of human perspective that emanated in India in 500 BC. With only their tactile senses, each of the blind men was insistent on claiming absolute truth about what the anomalous beast looked like, based on the limited part that he touched or felt. Well, we can only rely on the accounts of Dr. Mondi Perreo Kony's associates, mentees, and acquaintance to have an idea about the man. His maternal aunt, Madame Aku Uku of Okanabua, said Dr. Mondi Perreo Kony had a pleasing and electrifying presence and that he had an uncommon way of resolving very difficult situations. Perhaps it was this uncanny skill that displayed when Dr. Monday Perry Oconi, with some other patriots, successfully persuaded Ninja Delta militants who blew up pipelines, oil well heads, bore currents, and brought oil production to all time low in the region in the 90s to drop their weapons and embrace amnesty. Professor Ido Sobowale a distinguished journalist who once served as the Daily Times correspondent in Port Harcourt before the Civil War introduced opinion pooling in journalism in Nigeria as a university teacher met Dr. Monday Perry Oconi at Sierra Cox University, New York, United States of America, when the later was concluding his doctorate degree. A one-time commissioner in Lagos State described Dr. Monday Perry Oconi as very passionate and genial and that he made sure that he and his wife were comfortable when they had arrived in Syria in 1975. Professor Sobowale said Dr. Monde Perry Oconi was one of the best that, that the small community of Nigerians the Syria cause had to showcase a very brilliant chap with excellent presentation skills. Dr. Monde Perry Oconi had won a relationship with so many political, professional, and social associates. Chief Dennis Ubi of Undoni in Oba Ebima Undoni local government area, a versatile, educated playwright television producer Adele Onyedibia and Chief Raymond Tom Oyeo are also some of his acquaintance. I met uh, Dr. M.P. O'Connor in 1978, early 1978, at the formation of MPN. O'Connor is somebody, I may say, he brought courage to life in the sense that everything he was doing and the beautiful ideas he brought was how to better the life of our people. 
of old River State. And he has been on that till even his last day. The member of the Elders Council of River State, eh, he had to come to bring in all that have been happening since uh, the years. Eh? From um, uh, derivation, they put the derivation. That is Dr. M. P. Okoni. And uh, they put uh, for derivation from, um, that is Chagalese government in Lagos. Hmm? That couldn't, you know, the, our Northern brothers, they are very slippery. They refused to buy that derivation. Hmm? Then he engineered Okilio that they should take the government, our own government, to, to court. So Okilio, uh, South, that is South South uh, governor, Clement Esong, and uh, Ali of UPN took MPN government to court, and at the end of which they won, they gave them 1.5. We had to reach out to to the governor Alamesia at that time, you know, yeah. to Alamesia. Alamesia uh, encouraged us yes. that we should, eh? that he would give us our support. And we went to the creek. He was leading. And he was, I've uh, been championing a jokers. Who was leading? MP, Dr. MP Okoni. We have to reach out to the boys to re-educate them that it is not the best way. Eh? That thing, from that point, it moved to before Yaradwa came. Mm -hmm. So that uh, he will reach, just have dialogue, and they will take care of our people, our boys. I became very familiar with him. He was always calling me around. Ah, uh, Oyedibia, you know, he's a very jovial person. Jovial. He has a high sense of humor. Sometimes humor can be what you call black humor, but he delivers it. He has a swagger in the management of his language. Very classical, diplomatic. I think I, 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 I didn't know his father, but I know you, when a child talks, you can see how he's been affected by the culture from which he comes. He had a base in the culture of the Agua people. Quite diplomatic. I never saw him shouting, because that is not his style. He was reactionary in the sense that, you know, he came from somewhere and wanted to do something different from the usual. I didn't have any case that required his judgment, but you know, you, as you grow, you begin to judge people, you balance. He wasn't ready, he wasn't the type of man you could just easily go and say, with prejudice, something against another person. Monday is prepared to call you there, say, so boy, come, 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 this thing won't have the hair. What thing happened? Many managers don't do that. They are biased before they even hear the statement hear the case. And Monday never gave me, well, I was a very dedicated teacher, I can tell you, because I loved what I was doing. But your boss can always find a fault. He was my head of department. And uh, I'm glad he didn't find a fault with me before I left. But I always met him too. As he grew older, got into politics. I think the last time I saw him was about five years ago. And uh, he could still recognize me. There's this uh, face that was, uh, it, it adapts. The face adapts. If you are very philosophical, you can see depth in the man, even when he does not talk or the, did not say anything. Um, my mother told me how related we were. So, uh, Dr. Connie was. Um, a very popular name in, in, in those days. Um, he had the ear of the governor. And um, we looked up to him as um, our leader. 
political leader, community leader, and um, our leader in the civil service. He occasionally would hold meetings with the Abuja people who were in the civil service then. And um, we were not many, but O'Connor was driven, Dr. Kony was driven by the love he had for Abuja. And many times he would hold small meetings with us. I think I remember other Abuja senior civil servants then. Chief Isaac Ukwe, Mr. Morgan Moro, Mrs. Mercy Yellow, um, and there was Dr. Kubula Obuge, who was a special advisor to the governor. So many times we would gather in Dr. Okoni's office to discuss issues concerning a boy. Uh, he was so concerned about how a boy could move forward, get developed, because the politics of the state was still in its foundation stage that time and the ethnic groups were literally jostling for attention and you know River State is uh, a mini Nigeria full of so many ethnic groups and um, government operated on strictly on the five divisions of Port Harcourt, Ahoda, Brass, Ogoni, and Degema. Um, what we knew as Pabod then. So all the ethnic groups were jostling for attention and uh, having come at a time that uh, the likes of Professor Isaac Dema had laid the proper foundation for um, the politics and civil service of the state. Abuja was very well known then for the right reasons. Abuja was uh, popular and Mondo Kone uh, made that um, popularity he, 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 he sort of made it, uh, escalated it, made it more known. Abuja was more known during that time. Um, he was the first elected member representing, who represented Abuja Odwell, not as a local government then. In 1979, I wasn't in the country then, but I came to meet him as a member of the River State House of Assembly, representing a, a Boer Odwell. Okilo was, um, had a soft spot for uh, a Boer, and Okoni was well connected to him, and I'm sure he used his connection well and attracted especially to my part of Abuja, two very important projects. The Amoran Community Secondary School at Amiga was brought there by, by Dr. Mandy Kony. And there was this other project um, a cottage hospital sited at, in my community of Brian, very close to Mesu. 
but wrongly called Cottage Hospital in Misri, when in fact the facility was in O'Brien. So that Cottage Hospital was built and um, equipment shipped to site. We were waiting commissioning when the military struck and overthrew the government of uh, the democratically elected government of Usman Ali Shagari. And um, nothing happened again after then. The Emogan Community Secondary School at Amenikboko survived. Sa Ungo Jiyabu, a former real estate accountant general and town planner, held that Umo Phillips Ogo who recounted the unforgettable role Dr. Mondi Okoni played in their lives. A very beautiful story. My scholarship was withdrawn by His Excellency Melford Okilo in 1980, when I was studying in England. What was the reason for the withdrawal? My name, Ngozi Abu, sounded, never sounded rivers to him. Not just me anyway, me and others that had uh, Igbo names and all that. Our scholarships were withdrawn. I didn't know what else to do. I was in the first year of the university, at the University of Wales, uh, Cardiff. After that first year, I had no choice but to come home. And when I got home, it was a political era, um, MPN. I didn't know anybody. Fortunately, one of my uncles said, ah, the only person who can solve this problem is Dr. M.P. Okoni. I've never met him before. I, I, I had no way of meeting him at all. He was up there. I submitted my papers to him. And he simply went to him and uh, he said, why not? No hesitation, nothing. He left every other thing he had and went straight to meet uh, His Excellency at the government house. In an hour, my scholarship was restored. A man who never, who had never known me or my father, all his interest was that I was in a school and I was interested in improving my quality of education. He took interest and restored my scholarship. That is what endeared me to him, and I will never forget. He was interested in improving the lot of the people. You can see what happened to me. So also he was interested in making sure the ordinary man in the rural areas get what they are entitled to. And like you said, that is the first time in the history of real estate uh, uh, generators and the rest of the things were distributed to almost all the communities. We did not get but a lot of communities had generators. Life were improved. If you look at Odua, I went to Odua one of those years. Odua is like Potakota at the time. The light Every village in Odua had light. A few communities in Ekpetu had light. All were uh, his uh, efforts at the time. So you can see there is somebody who wanted a lot of the ordinary people to be improved. And he did very well. People liked him, just as I did. I lived with him, stayed with him in his house for years. Dr. Kony, as I can say, 
can describe him briefly as an institution. An institution. A good man. Or well, let me put it like this. Um, the Jigaba. The Iroko of the Abua ethnic nationality. A very good man. A man of truth. A philanthropist. An educationist. And a brilliant politician. A man that is bold to issues, a man that he can pursue what he believes, he can stand on what he believes to the end. In fact, he's my mentor. He's my father, he's my mentor, he's my all, he's my uh, uh, father-in-law. Because I, as I've told you, I'm married at his feet, his stepsister. So, he's my mentor, it's a man I wish. It's my role model. Uh... A good king must look out for a good successor, Dr. Mondi Perry O'Connor, that did not leave a vacuum in the pan Ijo nationalism struggle. Despite his death and in just a position, a boy within the context of the Big Brotherhood. Dr. Godpai Pagan Egenewari is now the Secretary of the Joe National Congress, INC, comprising Bayosa and River State. He spoke to us for a very, very long time, telling us the, the, the degradation in the country, the environmental pollution, how we pay nearly everywhere out of the country, yet we are given a peanut. And it was compared with um, what uh, late uh, Kessel Uya said that when we have a bunch of planting and the bunch of planting was harvested by a group of people to a place they call the center and gradually they move every uh, finger of that planting and throw one back to whoever have whoever owned the planting that that is unnatural. So everybody gets spoiled. Or everybody was interested. From there they moved to uh, uh, the Roma Abuan residence, a palace, and they had a think tank. And everybody agreed that this message is worth accepting. That was how the revival of this struggle started in Abuan land. And shortly after that period, we had this, um, this um, creation of Baeza in 1996. Everybody thought that Abua, Abua and Gene, Oduan and Koba would be part of Baeza. And when it was not, uh, late uh, Uema of Abua, uh, Chief uh, Victor Oko, Led Abua to Bayesa. And I think it was uh, who was the administrator then, um, forgotten the name of that military administrator, and he received us. A lot of vehicles left Abua for that uh, protest. Ayeni was, Ayeni, Ayeni was then, Ayeni was then the, the military administrator. And then um, we protested, played before him our demands, and left. So the journey started at that time, till the present time we find ourselves. In fact, I rode on his back today to become the secretary of the Joint National Congress Central Zone, uh, without which it would have been possible. And we have been there on a day-to-day -day basis, making sure that not only a boy, but every Ijo man will come to the realization that it is enough for what the federal government is doing to us, that we must be liberated. We must have resource control. We must have resource control. Our lands will, lands will be freely given to us. Our natural resources that God naturally gave to us must be taken back by the German. 
So that was how I started knowing him. And I will tell you that um, Dr. Late Dr. Mondi Periokoni was a very humble man. He was a man who believed in service. He can serve even the least child. He does not see service as anything at all. And um, there is no good saying that even in the first ESCO, Executive Council of the John, uh, National Congress, he was an auditor under Chief uh, Formoda. He served the John Nation with all his strength. In fact, you, it's, it's difficult to talk about the John National Congress without mentioning late uh, Dr. Monde Okoni. It's difficult. If I went in 1998, um, the, the Kayama Declaration came up. A lot of elders and chiefs of the journal were afraid to be in that, in, in Kayama, because it was a very, very serious meeting held by the youths. But Mandi Okoni was there live. He said, whatever that it will take for the federal government to hear our voice, that he will not relent his effort. He took a lot of risk for the John Nation. And he did everything possible within his reach to make sure that not only our poor people, not only the Angene, but even the Sabama, the Arubu, the Kalabari man, the Okrika man, everybody come to the unity of purpose that we are a just and we must fight to make sure that we are liberated. Um, there are other areas I can talk seriously about Mondi, uh, Dr. Mondi Perry O'Connor. Mondi Perry O'Connor was one man that I knew in Abua that believed that the only way to make the people develop is to be running constant meetings. He believed in holding meetings. He said, it is in the course of holding meetings that the people can, you know, share their views and find a way out on every issue of life. And he did that a lot while alive, on all issues of life. There are moments when he will call you and ask some silent questions. How is Abua? How is Abua going? I hope everything is okay. He would always be interested to know about how Abua is going, the level of development and all that. And um, generally, there are things that are difficult about people, and I think it has to do maybe with resources. Um, he tried his best to bring the people together, but I think there was a little bit of encouragement from, coming from others for him to make sure that these meetings are sustained, especially general meetings, not only that of the INC. There are sometimes... Yeah, now, as a very factor in the war, yes. can you mention his particular exploits from time to time, like this involved? Um, for years? In 1993, precisely, he, in the different meetings, he made the Joint National Congress to know that Abuja was the safest place to hold the convention. And meetings were called, even though there were no hotel facilities, every Abuja man, every Abuja woman came up and said, look, we will donate our buildings, our houses, to see that the convention took place. Was it 93? When Abacha it was a Basha coup that stopped that convention in Abuja. That was why in 1995 it was brought to Port Harcourt. He did that very well. And everybody was not happy when the convention never took place. Another area I can say so much about it was that Dr. Connie believed that on security issues, there is not a case of the center. There is a case of the communities that every man, every parent knows his child and every community knows their children 
Therefore, it is wrong not to hold our youth accountable. The part of a great man are ordered by God. So Dr. Monday Periokoni worked this world, a patriot and a great statesman. Dr. Monday Periokoni was a foundation member of the INC Pan Ninja Delta Elder Forum, PANDEF, South South Elders Forum, the Fun National Party of Nigeria, NPN, the People's Democratic Party PDP, and the River State Elders Council. He was also founder of City College in Pritakot and served on the Council of University of Lagos, University of Bini, and on the Executive of Private Schools, Proprietors Association of Nigeria. You fought the battle, you won. Adieu, Dr. Mundi Periokoni. <laughs>